Yeah, psychology, we do use a lot of self-report measures, which, is, which sometimes that's really the only way you can really quantify some variables. Some of the problems within the smartphone literature, however, just focuses on making scales. Uh, there was a paper that came out, right. I think this year or last year, that said there's been 78 different smartphone addiction measures created in 13 years. So people are just all coming up with their own different measurements and there isn't really a yes. standardized kind of way that people yes. are sharing the same kind yes, of data. Exactly. And, and that must make it hard to draw conclusions across different papers then because people are working with totally different metrics. Yeah, exactly. And, and some of the measures are very much out of tune with, I guess, what a psychological addiction is. So for example, there's a measure that mm -hmm. says, to what extent do you agree with the following things? And one of the items is, I send more than 10 text messages a day. And apparently that's that, measures, that that means you're addicted to your phone if you use it 10 times a day. But that's not necessarily the case. Interesting. Right. But like sending 10 text messages, that's either one yeah. conversation in like you're like looking at your phone at one time <laughs> and having one conversation with one person or you're like looking at your phone 10 times in a day. Just out of curiosity, one... how many texts a day do you send, Vivica? Oh, God, I that's. You guys need a new scale to, to take this one into account here. I don't, I don't, I don't know why you have to call me out like this. <laughs> but this is, I think this is the, your point here is that, you know, that when people are coming up with these scales, it sounds like they're a little out of touch with how people are actually using technology. Right. And it's not really helping us answer any questions if, if your scale is so completely disconnected from what the reality yes, is. Yes, exactly. There was this one paper came out by, by Linda Kay, uh, her and her colleagues, they made a friendship addiction scale to basically show that you can be quote addicted to anything, you know, just based on a psychometric scale. Right. Mm. So what does that tell us then about, about how you, how you approach the research for this then? Um, basically what it means is that we need to do more, I guess, more research regarding things that we can actually observe and measure that goes beyond self-report. Obviously, self-report is important, but gotcha. being able to, you know, look at stuff like screen time, you know, using different applications like the screen time feature, you know, being able to see when people are texting, when they are using their phones, as well as looking at different things such as, you know, are they using their phones when they're anxious? Are they using their phones when they're depressed? Um, that's another thing within right. the psychological literature is there's a lot of associations between smartphone use and anxiety and depression severity. But the important thing is to look at, at the direction of the, that relationship. While some people may think that, you know, using my phone might cause anxiety, it could be that I'm using my phone to distract myself from my anxiety. Interesting. That Interesting. Makes sense. So how, how do you go about measuring those things then and getting that kind of like fine grained understanding of exactly how somebody's using their phone and what effect it's having on their psychological health? So there's multiple instruments that we can use. We do use the depression, anxiety, stress scale, or, or it's just basically another self-report measure. Um, that's actually used quite frequently in clinician offices. Like if you go to see a counselor or therapist, that's one of the items we'll normally have you use. That's one way in which we tend to measure those types of variables. And then screen time, there's a variety of applications that track that information as well as just the iPhone itself does that. There also right. are some research that uses, um, collects these data longitudinally, which is also very important. So they might have a program that sends the participant a text message every day at a certain time, being like, and they might give them the, you know, the, the depression, anxiety, stress scale you know, every day at a certain time. And then they might also look at their phone use over those times and trying to see if there's any, you know, connections between those uses. And and we say they're looking at their phone use. How how are they looking at that? It depends. I mean, you there are different applications in which that the research can access the user's phone use if as long as they have that application downloaded on their phone and they can actually get that data real time. Mm -hmm. I myself don't use that. As a researcher, do you have to build your own applications to do that? Or is this something that you can get access to with Apple's? Because I know Apple has a lot of this information built into the iOS now. And I, I'm not sure about Android, but is this something that, that the big companies are making available to you as researchers? Or do you have to kind of like hire app developers and build your own so, apps? Um, so for me as a graduate student and with a graduate student income, I tend to use the iPhone support. <laughs> Um, I haven't, um, that makes sense. there have been people who have created applications 
But again, the problem with some of these applications mm -hmm. is that one thing I really like about the screen time feature is that it will say you spent 12 minutes on, you know, Twitter, you spent 30 minutes on YouTube. A lot of these applications, they're just looking at total phone use and they're treating it all as one metric. Whereas it's kind of misleading. Ah, uh, right? right. Especially since right. um, I read somewhere that YouTube is one of the, YouTube produces some of the most, I guess, music streams like each year for individuals. Mm. So you might, you might be, you know, mm -hmm. you know, listening to some tunes on your phone for, you know, eight hours of your work day, mm -hmm. but it's going to show up as eight hours of phone use, but that's not necessarily the game. Right. So, right. So there's exactly. definitely a lot of conceptual and things dealing with methods that research with smartphone use really has to take into account. And it's my hope that mm -hmm. we can, wow. you know, not continually make new smartphone addiction measures, but try to find ways to, I guess, address these questions of how can we best yeah. look right. at these variables. Thanks for checking out this clip from our show. To watch more clips or full episodes, click on our profile below. If you want to stay up to date on all of our new episodes and videos, click subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future guests or topics that you would like to see us cover on the show, leave us a message in the comments or connect with us on any of our social media channels at Funtime Program or on our website at FuntimeProgram.com. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.